E, çok kısa British Education Bureau'dan bahsedeceğim. Sonra da UK eğitim sisteminden bahsedeceğim. Daha sonra da University of Bath sunumuna geçeceğiz. Muhteşem güzel bir üniversite. Çok da güçlü. Her alanda çok güçlü bir üniversite. Evet, e, biz 2002 yılında kurulduk. Oxford'da kurulduk. E, İngiliz ve Türk kurucularımızla birlikte. E, 18 yıldır da e, Ankara İstanbul ve İzmir'de öğrencilerimize hizmet sunuyoruz. E, uzmanlık alanımız e, İngiliz eğitim sistemi. E, Üniversitelerin giriş şartları, başvuru süreci, tüm gerekliliklerle ilgili uzman donanıma sahibiz. Tüm danışmanlarımız İngiltere eğitim sistemine vakıf bu konuda eğitimler almış uzman bir kadrodan oluşmakta. Birleşik Krallık'ta 130 tane üniversite var ve bu 130 üniversitenin 90'ının Türkiye'deki resmi temsilcisi. Temsilcini yaptığımız üniversitelerimiz için de ücretsiz hizmet sunuyoruz. Üniversite of Bath bunlardan bir tanesi. Şimdi çok kısa ama çok da önemli olan bir slide var. Üniversite seçimini neye göre yapmalıyız? Öncelikle ülke seçimi yapmalıyız. Ülkemiz noktasında kararlı olmalıyız. Ondan sonra bölüm seçmeliyiz. Ülke seçimi sonrası da okul seçimi değil, önce bölüm seçimi. Ondan sonra da e, istediğimiz bölüm noktasında da hangi üniversitelerde olabileceğine bakarak seçimlerimizi yapmaya başlayabiliriz. Çünkü her e, üniversitede istediğimiz e, bölüm olmayabilir. Dolayısıyla bölüme karar verdikten sonra okula karar vermek biraz daha e, adımlarımızı kolaylaştırıcı bir unsurdur. Okul seçimini yaparken ise bir takım e, parametreler var baz alacağımız. Başarı sıralaması en önemlisi bunlardan. E, sonra şehir bazlı seçimler yapabiliriz. Büyük şehirde mi olmak isteriz, küçük şehirde mi olmak isteriz. E, İngiltere'deki şehir e, yüz ölçümleri Türkiye'deki gibi değil tabii ki biraz daha farklı. Dolayısıyla aslında üç büyük şehir dışında hepsi de bize küçük gelecek şehirlerdir. E, akabinimde belki de Kampüs üniversitesi mi olsun, şehir üniversitesi mi olsun ona bakarak kararlar verebiliriz. Sosyal imkanlar ve milliyet dağılımı noktasında da çok şeffaf oldukları için bu tür kriterleri baz alarak seçimlerimizi gerçekleştirebiliriz. Birleşik Krallık'ta dört e, tane ülke var. E, sanırım e, Masum'un okunu görme şansımız var. E, en yukarıda ki bölüm Newcastle ve Üstü İskoçya'da, İskoçya'dır. E, batıya baktığımız zaman Kuzey İrlanda e, birazcık daha doğusu gördüğümüz nokta e, Newcastle'ı da içine alacak şekilde İngiltere'dir. Ve Bangor ile Chester'ın bittiği nokta Swansea ile dahil olmak üzere Galler'dir. Dört ülkeden oluşur. Birleşik Krallık'taki eğitim sistemiyle ilgili biraz bilgi aktaralım. Üniversitelerin yok denkliği vardır. Yok denkliği alma prosedürü de vardır. Bu prosedürlerle ilgili sizleri bilgilendirme şansımız var. 130 tane devlet üniversitesi vardır. Ortalama 3 tane özel üniversite var Birleşik Krallık'ta. Özel üniversiteler çok fazla tercih edilmezler. Yapı olarak biraz daha Türkiye'den farklıdır. Dolayısıyla vakıf üniversiteleri gibi düşünmenizi istemem özel üniversiteleri. Onun için devlet üniversitesi tercih etmenizi öneririm. İnteraktif bir eğitim sistemi vardır. Öğrenciyi de içine alır e, ve öğrencinin de kendisini bu doğrultuda geliştirme şansı e, yaratır. E, lisans eğitimi İngiltere'de, Galler'de ve Kuzey İrlanda'da 3 yıldır. İskoçya'da 4 yıldır. Undergraduate dediğimizde lisans eğitimi. Lisans öncesi eğer not ortalamamız yeterli olmazsa birçok üniversitenin hazırlık yılı vardır ki ona foundation yıl denir. Yüksek lisans da bir yılını kapsayan bir eğitimdir. Doktora, PhD dediğimiz, dediğimiz eğitim sistemi ise 3 yıldan ibarettir. Birleşik Krallık'ta son 2 yıldır e, var olan çok da güzel bir fırsat diye görüyorum ben bunu öğrencilerimiz için. Mezuniyet sonrası 2 yıl oturum izni e, verir öğrencisine. E, bu 2 e, yıllık izin esnasında da öğrencilerimiz genelde kendilerine e, iş bulma imkanı yaratırlar. Bir de Birleşik Krallık'ta çok büyük artı olarak bizim her zaman dile getirdiğimiz bir nokta. Dünya başarı sıralamasında ilk yüzde bulunan üniversitelerden kabul alma şansımız var ve bu üniversitelerde eğitim alma şansımız var. Dünya sıralamalarına baktığımızda 500-600 üniversiteden bahsediyoruz. İlk yüzde birçok 
Birleşik Krallık Üniversitesi var. Dolayısıyla eğitim sistemleri çok güçlü bir ülke. Bundan ötürü de başarı sıralamasında en yukarıda olan üniversitelerde eğitim alma şansımız olabiliyor. Eğitim alanları çok yeni bir yelpazede sunuluyor. Bahsetmiş olduğumuz 3 yıllık eğitim sisteminde farklılıklar gösteren 3 ana bilim dalı var. Tıp eğitim süresi 3 yıl değildir. İngiltere'de özellikle ya da dünyanın başka bir ülkesinde uzman olarak doktor olmak istiyorsak 10 yıllık bir eğitim sürecini kapsıyor bu. Mimarlık da bu şekilde. Eğitim süresi 3 yıl olan mimarlık eğitimi sonrası öğrenci İngiltere'de ya da Avrupa'da olabilir. Mimar olarak görev almak ve kariyerine bu şekilde devam etmek isterse 7 yıllık bir eğitim sürecini göz almak durumunda. Hukuk da buna çok benzer. E, avukat olmak istiyor isek İngiltere'de ya da Avrupa'nın başka bir ülkesinde 7 yıllık eğitim sürecini tamamlamamız gerekiyor. E, hukuk için 3 yıl sonrasında Türkiye'ye dönüp fark derslerimizi, Türk hukuk farkı derslerimizi alarak e, burada yok denkliğimizi, akreditasyonlarımızı tamamlayarak baroya kaydımızı yaparak e, avukat olarak kariyerimize Türkiye'de devam edebiliyoruz. Benim anlatacaklarım bu kadar. Ben şimdi sözü çok değerli yetkililerimiz Kiara Nibay ve James O'Grady'ye bırakmak istiyorum. Bizlere her zaman ulaşabilirsiniz. Telefon uzaklığındayız. Siz de her zaman arayabilirsiniz. Her zaman e-mail ile sorularınız olursa bizlere ulaşabilirsiniz. Seminerlerimiz devam ediyor bu arada. Bir sonraki seminerde yeniden görüşmek üzere diyelim. Kiara James... It's yours now. Thank you. Thank Here you very much. Lovely to meet everyone. Hi. Let me just um, share my screen. Um, okay. So should work. Can everyone see that PowerPoint? Is that working, James? Yeah. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Wonderful. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Kira. I'm acting head of undergraduate recruitment at the University of Bath and I'm joined today by my colleague James. Hello everybody, my name is James O'Grady and I'm the student recruitment manager in the postgraduate admissions and recruitment team. So we're here this morning, um, this afternoon actually, to, to talk to you a little bit about the university um, and the, the employability elements that are really important to us um, at the University of Bath. Um, so first of all, little question for you. Um, you'll see here it says, why do you want to study abroad? You can um, answer this either by scanning that QR code and putting an answer in, I hope this works. Um, or you can open another window and go to slido.com and type in the hashtag that is there. Um, and really, this helps us understand from your perspective what you're interested in and things like that. So um, I'm going to give you a minute to, to see if you can put an experience or a reason in as to why you want to study abroad. It might be that you want to practice English or it might be that you want to experience life in a different country. It might, okay, so someone's written their prestige as well and that's a really good reason because a lot of the reputations in a lot of the universities in the UK do have a really good reputation as well. Um, PhD as well, yep, there's plenty of opportunities for you to carry on studying beyond the um, const constraints of um, a bachelor's or a master's degree. You can look for PhDs as well. Um, better education has been added there as well. Um, twice, okay, yeah. essentially, students believing they'll get a better education in, in the UK. Um, there's certainly an emphasis on quality of teaching and learning, better universities. Okay. Brilliant. So that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I've got two people who've said, I believe I will get a better education. You see, those words have gotten bigger, 
because um, two people have said exactly the same thing. Experience life in another country, career opportunities is written there as well. So we've been getting lots of different um, ideas from you as to um, why you want to study in the UK. Now, please keep that in mind. There will be a couple of points during this session when we're going to ask you to go back to slido.com or scan another QR code to answer the next question that we've got on our list as well. So hopefully that will um, be helpful for you to do. Another one just okay. came in at the end there, sorry, Kira, was uh, better career opportunities. So hopefully we can yeah, go into a bit more detail about how you can get those kind of career support on at the university later. Yeah, absolutely. And somebody's also added to become qualified. And at the end of the day, when you're investing into your education in this way, um, the outcome has to be that you get that you get a good job. And that's why we're here to talk to you about this today as well. OK, over to you, James. Perfect. So we're going to start then by looking at um, why Bath. So a bit about the university, um, just kind of an overview of what we're like as an institution, kind of our ethos as a university, and also just where we are in the UK for those who haven't perhaps done much research yet. I saw Sevda earlier go into a bit of detail about the UK, mapping out the UK. So we're going to focus in honing on Bath specifically and where we are uh, in relation to the rest. So here. So to start with, where are we? So Bath is located around 80 minutes to 85 minutes from London, so the capital of the UK. Um, very easy to get to the capital, so trains run every 30 minutes or so, which means that if you want to go on a day trip or go for a weekend in London, it's very easy to do. And also with increase, uh, the increasing uh, blended, from, uh, blended work or working from home approach, you'll find also that if you want to be based in Bath and work in London, it's becoming increasingly easy to do that as well. So that's for after you've finished your course. But not just London, we're also close to other cities as well. So the capital of Wales, uh, Cardiff, is about 50, 45 minutes to 50 minutes from Bath. And we have a big city on our doorstep called Bristol, which is around 12 to 15 minutes by train. So you're not going to be isolated. We're very well connected and that's very important. But Bath itself as a city is a very special place. And we're just going to go into more detail in a moment about what makes Bath the city such a special place to live and study. In terms of around Bath as well, as well as the cities, um, we've also got other areas or places that you definitely want to see when you're in the UK. So, for example, Stonehenge or the Cotswolds are both really quite famous must-see destinations. Um, if you've not heard of them, I would definitely recommend Googling them and then you'll be really excited to see them with your own eyes once you arrive. And in terms of the university itself, so the University of Bath is a top 10 university and this is really important. So in the UK, we have three different ranking systems, um, the Guardian, the Complete University Guide, and the Times and Sunday Times um, Education Guide. And these are really important. It's important that we're top three consistently for a number of reasons, but something to give you kind of peace of mind or to give you confidence in the University of Bath is the fact that each system uses a different set of criteria. So for example, the Guardian places a lot of emphasis or onus on student experience, student satisfaction, and we're sixth in the UK for that, for a number of reasons we'll go into later. But also ranking systems like the Sunday Times and Times, they look a lot more at employability, um, graduate starting salaries, employability of students, both once they've graduated and also in the long term. And again, we're top 10 in that, in that ranking system as well. So we're a top 10 UK university, so you can rest assured that our quality of institution is very strong. But not only that, also, in terms of our teaching quality and our student experience, we're really proud of our status in the UK. So on the left hand side here, you, you can see TEF Gold. So TEF stands for the Teaching Excellence Framework, and that is the UK government's independent assessment of every single university in the UK and, and their teaching quality, teaching output. So we've been assessed at the highest standard gold, which you would expect from a top 10 university, but it's not always the case. So that's just something to look at, something to bear in mind when you're making your initial decision about which university is best for you. Also, as you can see here, and this does tie in and co correlate with the, our overall ranking we just went over, we're also four for student experience, fifth for graduate prospects. Again, these are really important factors for us. We wanna ensure that our students enjoy their time living in a very special city of Bath at a very good university, but also that when they finish their course, They've got the knowledge and know-how to actually secure 
a good graduate job afterwards. So this is just kind of an overview of our university. We're going to go into more depth later on. Brilliant. Thanks, James. And there's a picture here of our fantastic campus. We're working from home at the moment, but I do miss it seeing it here. And um, the QR code in the bottom there is just one that you might like to take a photograph of um, to take a look at at a later date. Um, it will take you to our virtual campus tour so you can have a look around. Um, now, as you can see here, obviously, Bath is a campus university. That's one of the things that I really love about the campus, it really builds upon this sense of community um, that, you, that you do essentially get from being on a campus university. And right in the centre of campus, in the heart of campus, there is a library that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So you've always got somewhere to go and study. And there are lots of other study, um, st study spaces around the campus as well. Um, there's a doctor doctors, a dentist, a supermarket. There are 11 different cafes and restaurants. Um, there are two theatres and an art gallery in our um, Edge building. And you can see in the bottom left hand corner there, our world class sports training village, which has numerous sporting facilities in there for you to access as well. And a lot of those sporting facilities are free of charge with your sports pass you can use the pool you can use the tennis courts or the badminton courts all free of charge um, you just have to pay if you want to use the gym or, or any of the classes um, you can see lots of accommodation around the outside there as well so um, a lot of students will choose to live um, a lot of undergraduate students will choose to live um, on campus in their first year and we guarantee a place in university accommodation in our first year we do have some postgraduate specific accommodation on campus and we also have some accommodation in the city center as well and you can't quite see on this picture but in the top right hand corner there that's the city center in bath which is um, about 30 minutes for you to walk into the city center um, but there are buses 24 hours a day to get into the city center during term time and that bus takes about 30 minutes now what you can't tell from this picture so well is that we are actually located on top of a hill and um so that walk down into the city centre is sometimes a little bit easier than the walk back up to campus as well. And it's also worth adding Bath is a UNESCO World Heritage City. Um, actually, I'll just take a moment and look at this picture because I love this picture. It's one of my favourite photographs of Bath. And this is why Bath is called Bath. These are the Roman baths that are in the centre of our city. Um, it's a museum now that you can have a wander around and it's free to get in with your student ID as well. Um, you can't have a bath in the baths. Um, I don't think that you would really want to because it is a little bit smelly, but there is a spa nearby that's made of the same natural um, natural mineral water that is heated um, underground. Um, but the city itself is a world heritage city and there are two cities in the world with this status. One is Venice and the other one is Bath. So you can imagine hopefully by that the, the, the level of protection that, that, is, that is enforced in ensuring that our city complete, um, maintains its very, very um, beautiful and historic city centre. We're also the second surface city in England, and it's one of the benefits of being a small city is that it is also a safe city. Um, and you can see here a couple of other pictures of the city centre um, as well. So I mentioned earlier that we, there are um, mineral um, baths that you can have a dip in and that you can see that one on the top left. That isn't just any old swimming pool. It's actually a thermal pool um, that is naturally heated in a spa that you can have a wander around overlooking the Bath Abbey, uh, which is very nice. In the top right there, you can see the beautiful Royal Crescent, which has breathtaking views. Um, you might also see a couple of hot air balloons. It's not unusual to see that um, in our city centre as well. So we asked already why you want to study in the UK. Um, let's try another slide up and see if you can answer this. What do you want to study? 
do you want to study um, engineering or business or history? Okay, MIT, so really good choice for the University of Bath. So if you, anyone who came in late, and um, what I want you to do with this is go to that QR code or open an extra window on your device and go to slido.com and you can type in the hashtag there to um, tell us what subject area you are interested in. This is always good to see. Okay, physics is a um, popular choice for the University of Bath. Um, education, we've got a great undergraduate education degree um, and some fantastic MS, um, Masters of Education as well. We've got finance, so um, I know James is going to mention some of the benefits in, in the School of Management later on. Oh, not surprisingly, a couple of popular ones there for architecture, which is always a popular choice at Bath. Computer science is now winning as well. Um, what else? We've got automotive and engineering. Okay, another great choice. We've got a great reputation at Bath as well for these subjects. Now, we don't actually have a law degree at the University of Bath. Um, we've got some great options in things that are related to law, from business law to things like um, politics and international relations, but we don't actually have a law degree um, at the university. But hopefully you will still find this course and um, this talk a little bit helpful as well. It is great to see how popular computer science is. We've really seen um, an increase in, in computer science over the past couple of years. We've also got a great new course that just started this year that's computer science with artificial intelligence as well. So you can find some more detail on our website on that as well. Okay, great. Right. Over to you, James. Brilliant. So in this section, we're going to focus on build better. So how you can build yourself better by coming to the University of Bath. But I thought I'd also just start by showing you how we are as a university building ourselves better as well. So just in the photo you can see behind here, this is the new management building currently being constructed on campus. And this is the biggest single point of investment the University of Bath has ever made in its history. So showing you basically we are bettering ourselves. We're building this brand new state-of-the-art facility with the students at heart. So all of the space has been designed. It's been created to make sure the students have the study space, the lecture space, the group work space they need in order to thrive once they arrive at campus. So that's how we're building ourselves better. Now I'm going to go into a bit more detail about how you can build yourself better too. To start with though, just a very brief history lesson about Bath. And just to let you know about our foundation, so within our very DNA is this connection to industry. So in our chartership, which is kind of a contract the university signs with the government in order to get university status, it actually states that the objects of the university shall be to advance learning and knowledge by teaching and research in close association with industry and commerce. So from our very beginnings, you found that we have really been focused on shrinking the gap between the world of work and academia. And that's why you find so many placements or connections or exposure to business or to industry on all of our programs here at the university. It stems all the way from the very beginning, our very foundation. So some stats then, and I don't wanna give you fatigue by giving you too many stats and rankings and so on, but just to again hammer home the fact that we are fifth for graduate prospects. So we're fifth for graduate prospects in terms of students being able to secure full-time employment uh, after finishing their course within six months. We're fifth for employment after 15 months and we're also fourth in the whole of the UK for graduate starting salaries. So we really are one of the top institutions in terms of students being able to actually secure full-time employment and a good starting salary once they've completed their programme. Also something that ties in with uh, our placements that we offer, we also have uh, loads of our students on placement. So we have almost uh, two thirds of our undergraduate students actually taking a paid placement as part of their studies. So you can see here that we're also second in the UK for the number who actually decide to study a placement or, or study abroad. So take a placement or study abroad. So that's just something to bear in mind too. Again, tying in with our DNA. Yeah. And this is our core theme. So we're not going to go into lots of depth here, but it's just to highlight really what we're about, again, about our ethos as an institution. So we are research led. So our research output, as well as our teaching quality, our research output has also been assessed by the UK government. And 87% of it has been assessed as being world-class or world-leading, which is the top 
ranked research output quality possible. So that's important for all students, whether you're coming to do an undergraduate course, a postgraduate course, or PhD, of course, because it means you're learning from those at the very front end of their subject area. So you're learning the freshest information, the newest information and knowledge to then take to industry after you complete the course. Practice-based learning, again, ties in with placements, but it's about ensuring that what you're studying is directly applicable to the real world, to the business world, to whatever industry you're interested in. And you'll find that pretty much every single program we offer has some sort of practice-based learning or exposure to business and industry embedded in the program. A global focus, again, is a key thing for us, and it's about welcoming students from around the world. So we have students from over 130 different countries here on campus at Bath, but also we have academics from over 70 countries as well. We want to have that kind of global outlook, different perspectives, bring them to the classroom. And that's why we want students from Turkey to come as well and bring your own unique perspectives and your own outlook and bring your own emphasis for the classroom. Professional development, of course, is important as well as employability, which we'll talk about later, and alumni engagement. And again, this all kind of interlinks, but our alumni network is huge at the university and we always foster our relations with the, our alumni as well as our current students. And you'll find that later on in the slides. Okay, so let's talk a bit about placements then. Um, James mentioned that about two thirds of our students do a placement. To explain to you what this means, typically, at an undergraduate level, a degree takes three years. You would do year one, year two, year three, then you graduate. If you incorporate a placement into that, that three year degree takes four years. And you would do year one, year two, placement year, year three. And that placement year is essentially a 12 month or year long paid internship that's allowing you to connect the academic theory to professional practice relating to what you are studying. Um, so this is Sam. Sam just got back from placement last year. So Sam was uh, very lucky with his placement. He went to Microsoft to work on the launch of the Xbox One X and he was working within their marketing team. Now that sounds like a very exciting placement um, and actually when we look at some of the key th um, facts you can see some of the logos down there there are a huge range of high quality placements that we do have av available at the university. So three key facts that I want you to take away about these placements. First of all about 68% of our students take part in this kind of experience and there are some courses like architecture or business where this is compulsory and it's very much embedded in to the course that you're studying but in a lot of them it's optional but most students do choose to do it and um, to compare that to a typical degree I think in most universities about 20% of students do take part in a placement so inevitably what that means is that um, you are very employable when you do come back from it. And you see very much that when you meet students, when they return to the campus after spending that year on a placement, how they've grown in confidence and inevitably academic understanding, but also things like communication skills and, and, um, and, and capability. And that really shows when you are sitting down to have your first job interviews ready for when you graduate. Now, we have connections with over 3,000 employers. Many of them are graduates from, the, graduates from the University of Bath who now work in senior positions in major corporations in places like Microsoft or L'Oreal, for example. Some of them will be smaller startup companies that you might not have heard of, but we do have a team in each of our faculties whose job it is, is to help you get ready and help you prepare for that placement. And that goes without saying then that that ongoing career development is completely embedded into the placement. So, um, well, into your degree. So you will have personal development lessons in our School of Management and in lots of the other courses that's 
compulsory part of your learning um, but you learn things like how to write a CV properly um, developing interview techniques developing presentation skills so that you are provided with all the tools you need to secure replacement but more importantly to secure a job when you graduate from university and that is why when we mentioned at the start that we're ranked very highly for employability this is one of the major reasons why now there are also placement opportunities available in quite a few in some of our postgraduate courses but not in all of them as well so that's something worth having a look at if you are interested um, and the only other thing I will add to this is that as an international student you are allowed to work full-time and get paid for a placement as it is classed as part of your your degree okay back to you James yeah so as we've mentioned already it's very important um, to get kind of that exposure to industry or to perhaps start thinking about the kind of work you want to go into or what you want to do after completing either your undergraduate degree or even your master's or PhD. So you can rest assured that whatever you decide to study at the University of Bath, you will have access to a dedicated team of careers advisors to kind of give you all the support you need throughout the steps. So whether you want to go on to do some further study, perhaps a PhD or a master's, again, the career service is there and they can support you with that. And they're unbiased, so they can give you support and knowledge about all of the PhDs available in the UK, not restricted to just Bath. Also, Want to start your own business in the UK again we have the, the careers team who can help you with that and actually at the university we have what we call the innovation center so in the city center we have the innovation center which is a dedicated space for students who want to start their own business to be able to do so so again you get the support you can join challenges to learn about how to launch your own business your own brand and then go on to do that and have the support there if you need it of course, a key um, kind of job or key role that the Career Service plays for us is also to help you as a student secure that employment once you graduate. So as well as your part time work, they'll also help you to look for graduate jobs. So it might be understanding the graduate schemes in the UK. It might be a case of going to workshops to understand the types of companies or the type of opportunities that are available to you. It's about going to careers fairs, so meeting with big international organisations and smaller local SMEs on campus or online throughout the time in the spring and the autumn, but also during the, the whole of the term, the whole of the academic year. There's plenty of support there for you. And with the introduction or reintroduction, should I say, of the post-study work visa, that's going to give you a lot more flexibility, a lot more scope and a lot more room for you to kind of get a think about, time to think about and to kind of get a grip on what you want to do once you finish your course. The career service is a team dedicated just for that. They can also help you get an internship. So perhaps in your summer holidays or once you've completed the course, you want to have a taster of the business world or you want to get some exposure, they can help you to identify a placement as well. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that um, also the, the team are there for you throughout your time as a student. But again, tying in with what I said earlier about alumni engagement, you can actually continue to access the career service throughout your journey from graduate all the way to retirement if you wish. It's actually in, indefinite, it's a lifetime of support. So you can access that whenever you want. So maybe in two years time, you're in London or even Istanbul or elsewhere. Uh, you can still set up online appointments if you want that kind of tailored guidance. It, we're there for you basically as a university. Okay, just a quick question yet. Yeah. Do you have any careers plans yet? So a quick scan. <coughs> Maybe we've inspired you today. Okay, uh, yes, yeah. totally. That's what that's what I like to, to see. Brilliant. Um, Okay, great. So most people do. Some people have a good idea and it's fine not to know what you want to do as well. And the other thing to stress is that one of the benefits of, of coming to university is that you get to, to deepen your understanding of different areas. So you get to look at things, maybe you're interested in business, but you're not quite sure what what it is or um, you don't know what area of business you might to, you might like to work in as well. Um, you know, it's it's also absolutely fine to be in that that position when you start university and not be too sure of what's what's coming. Probably out also uh, worth mentioning that the careers team are there from the moment 
you're not quite sure and like you say Kira the course is a great way for you to kind of explore different areas but also the careers team throughout your time not just when you're about to graduate can kind of give you support tailored advice and kind of give you the guidance you need to kind of find your feet and what you want to do yeah absolutely okay um just a couple more bits um from us we we do have an undergraduate virtual experience um it's worth having a look on the university website for that there's you know obviously you're in you're in turkey we're in england it's not likely that you're going to be able to come and visit the campus anytime soon and we are trying to make sure that we can find as many ways as we can to make sure that you can come and visit and and be a part of, of the community um, so the undergraduate virtual experience has lots of different activities going on um, in addition to the campus tours that um, cover undergraduate and postgraduate we've got some top tips on applicants applications and writing your personal statement on there we've got some links to different videos you can hear about students who've been on placement in different um, faculties within the university um, and find out what's going on there and you can also chat to some current students as well so we've got a huge community of students who are online who you can approach and, and ask some questions to as well so I'd highly recommend taking a look at that Yeah, and for postgraduate as well, if you're thinking to do a or even a PhD, but generally for master's students, you can also log in most Wednesdays, not every single Wednesday, but most Wednesdays between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. UK time. And you can ask any questions you have. Uh, the BEB counsellors are very well trained. They know all things Bath anyway. But again, it might be something really niche you have you want answered. Feel free to log in, register with your details, and we can answer your questions then too. Brilliant. Okay, so that's the end of our um, of our session now. So we are open to any questions that you might have as well. I will stop sharing now. Thank you very much, uh, James and Kiara, for the great presentation. And I will help you to um, let you know about the questions from our students, attendees. Uh, the first question is, uh, any opportunity for married couples to accommodate inside the campus? Yeah, yes, we do have uh, couples accommodation, family accommodation available. Um, and just to note on that point, actually, that although all of our accommodation is not first come, first serve, so as long as you submit your application for accommodation between March and July or May and July, depending on the level of study, you'll be, you'll be guaranteed accommodation. For couples housing, you do need to make sure you get your application in as soon as the window opens because we have limited rooms available. But yes, we do have some um, there for you. Yeah. Um, and also price range, uh, our attendee would like to know. Yeah, so well, I can speak for postgrad. I think it's quite similar yeah. to graduate too. So for, for postgraduate, for example, we, we range from £130 up to £270 per week. £130 being the lowest end of the spectrum, obviously. Um, it's probably worth bearing in mind that this cost covers Wi-Fi, bills, electricity, or any other cost is all included in that. So just something to bear in mind as well. Yeah, mm. that's what you're looking for. Yeah, we do have some even more affordable rooms in undergraduate. Um, the most affordable rooms are shared rooms that start at about £75 a week. So they are limited because most people do want a private room. But if you are are looking at um, looking at your budget very carefully that can be something worth considering um, as well um, and then within any of the options you have you can choose to have um, your accommodation fully catered where you can use your library cards and you can eat in any of the cafes and restaurants on campus um, you can have it part catered where you get about 25 pounds a week to do that with or you can have it fully self-catered where you cook for yourself every meal of every day inevitably self-catering option is quite a lot cheaper as well um, aside from that i always recommend any students when they're starting university to learn how to cook something before you come it can be uh, it can be a game changer um, and it's a great way to make friends as well when you're cooking for your flatmates. But whichever option you choose, you will always have access as well to a, um, to a kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Uh, and one more question, actually the popular one is about scholarships. Uh, do you offer any scholarships for international students? Yeah, do you want to start, Gems, with the postgraduate ones? Yes, yeah. okay, sure. So for students who want to do a master's, there are a number of scholarships that they can apply for, depending on which program they're interested in. So if you're, for example, interested in psychology, for example, there are two scholarships available each worth £5,000, and if successful, you can be awarded up to £10,000 off the total cost of tuition. For MSc scholarships for School of Management students, there's one scholarship available, again worth £5,000, and then the final scholarship for Master's level is the MBA scholarship, and this is, can be up to 30% of the total cost of tuition, so it can be quite a sizable amount of money, um, and that's automatic. With the others they need to apply, but they'll be invited to do so once they've been made an offer, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at an undergraduate level, we have two um, key scholarships that is worth mentioning. We have our Chancellor's Scholarship, which provides students with um, up to £2,000 off their tuition fee. This is a merit-based scholarship. It's um, looking for the highest... Um, student capability is the equivalent of A star, A star, A star in, in, in A levels. Um, but there is no application. It's an automatic process. Um, and we also have another scholarship that's for IB students. Um, and I know that I've spoken to a few IB students in Turkey in the past. We do have um, a good relationship with the IB at Bath. And we um, with our IB scholarships, we provide, it can be merged with the Chancellor's one, and you can get up to £8,000 of your first year tuition fees. Now, that is guaranteed if you get 44 points in your IB, which is no big deal at all. Um, I know that's incredibly hard for, for anyone to manage, um, but that does work on a sliding scale. So if you get 43 or 42 points in your IB, that could be an option for you as well. Um, aside from scholarships, while we are on the topic of funding, um, I would also add that um, the placement year is a really good way to supplement your studies. The average salary during an undergraduate placement is, is um, £22,000 a year. The highest salary last year um, was an economic student who was earning £44,000 a year during his placement. So while not all placements are, um, well, Placements are not guaranteed, but they are well paid and it is a good opportunity to um, to supplement your tuition fees that way if it is something you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And another question is from uh, one of our participants is about the specific entry requirements. I think the general one. General entry requirements. Um, for undergraduate degrees, um, we'd be looking for the equivalent of A star and two A's down to an A and two B's in, in A level or equivalents. Uh, for, for students who want to apply for a master's, we're looking for between 2.8 and 3.0 GPA, um, depending on the institution um, they've studied at and depending on the programme they're applying for too. So we're looking at, I'd say 2.8 to 3.0 is a, a rule of thumb. Really, for their, it's case by case in each application is considered on the lack in its entirety on a holistic basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, the other one is, uh, is the foundation years mandatory for uh, international students? Oh, okay. So no, the foundation year is not mandatory. The foundation year is there for students who would like to study at the University of Bath but whose, um, sub whose um, high school subjects have not provided you with enough content for you to be able to um, enter into year one of, of um, an undergraduate degree. So if you're doing A-levels or IB um, or your Turkish high school, um, it's usually about 85% um, CPGA, in your um, Turkish high school, with those kind of qualifications, you would be able to apply for entry into year one. If you are not quite reaching that academic standard, but you're really keen to apply for Bath, that is when you would look at a, a foundation year. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I think, Sevd, I think Sevd has got something to say. Sorry, can I ask a question, Kiara? Just to make it clear, how about architecture, VA degree? 
Well, architecture is a little bit different. Um, so architecture, we will not, ex we do not accept any um, foundation programs at all for architecture. And even though we've got our own foundation program at the University of Bath, we do not accept foundation students from our own foundation program to apply for architecture. Um, so if you are interested in studying architecture at Bath, you will need to be um, demonstrating that you have a good level of um, capability in your high school studies. Um, if you're doing A-levels, we would essentially be looking for an A-star and two A's. If you're doing your Turkish high school, we would be looking for CPGA of 85%, with 85% uh, in calculus, mathematics or physics in the final year. Um, if you're doing A levels we, or IB, HL subjects, we don't have a specific um, subject portfolio that you have to have, but we definitely like it when students can show capability in maths or physics alongside um, a demonstrable capability in, in art or design. So you need to be good at maths, but still quite creative. But most importantly, if you are interested in applying to architecture at Bath, there is no portfolio for that application. And we'll be looking for that really, really strong personal statement that shows how passionate you are about architecture. And that isn't saying, I'm really passionate about architecture or I've always wanted to be an architect. That isn't what we want to hear. What we want to know is what you're doing about it. Why, how you know you want to study this and how you're nurturing that and how you can justify the ambition that you've got. So that'll be something that we'll be really keen to see in that personal statement. And it's probably also just worth mentioning for the master in architecture, so the MRH, that you do need a portfolio. It's around 30 pages, but uh, it really explained what, what, what we're after on the... Okay, thank you. And uh, another question is from our, one of the attendees. Uh, she mentioned that uh, she has been a visiting researcher at, uh, at the University of Bath for five months before the pandemic. And uh, she would like to know uh, whether there is any uh, PhD scholarship opportunities. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't many um, scholarships available for international students at PhD level. So there are some resources on our page where you can find third party kind of funding. But yeah, you won't find much at all from the university itself, unfortunately. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, we can certainly share a link um, about where to look for third party funding if that helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, do you offer scholarships uh, specific for uh, MA education or TESOL? MAT. So the MA education is a distance learning program. Um, so that's paid for on a unit by unit basis. So that no scholarships for the MA education course at all. So that's done online. There are some on campus elements to it. If you wish to choose to come to campus, you can, but you can do that entire program remotely. Uh, it's a distance learning course. No scholarships available. For the MAT so course, on the other hand, there are two scholarships, the ones I mentioned earlier. Um, the titles of them are quite grand and hard to remember, but they're called the Dean's Award for Academic Excellence and the Global Leaders Scholarship. They're the ones that you apply for at the same time with one application, and provided you put together a good, strong application and you're a good candidate, you could be awarded up to £10,000 off the total cost of tuition, which amounts to around 50% discount on tuition. Mm -hmm. Okay, and another one is, uh, is it difficult for postgraduate students to uh, work part-time? A student as a part-time student and how many days and hours a week uh, they can uh, work as a part-time student uh, yeah I mean in terms of working part-time Bath actually has a relatively high number of opportunities available so if you actually look at the UK as a whole Bath is above the average because we're one of the most visited cities as Kira pointed out earlier because of our beauty because of our UNESCO status and unique features there's a lot of foot traffic a lot of people relocate to Bath and we have lots of students in Bath. So that means that there's lots to do. There's lots of museums, there's lots of coffee shops, restaurants, bars, and so on. It's quite a vibrant city and there are plenty of part-time jobs available for students who just want to make some extra money um, to help fund their studies. Also on campus, we have plenty of opportunities for our students and the Students' Union 
um, advertises roles on campus um, throughout the year. So there'll be plenty of chances for students who want to get some part-time work um, in to do so. But there is a limit of 20 hours per week for students. Um, during, that's only during term time, I should add. If it's during the holidays, it's unlimited. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, again. And I think, yeah, one more question. Uh, Studying, I mean, uh, one of our students, the same one, I think, uh, would like to know studying hours. During the studying hours, uh, how, how long they can uh, work? How many studying hours? Oh, how many studying hours on the course per week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. Well, that, that really, really does depend on the program. So, for example, the M, for master's level, speaking here, for M which is the master of research there's relatively few hours per week because a lot of it is self-study time but other programs so for example the uh, engineering courses or the computer science courses it's a pretty full schedule because a lot of it is using the facilities to complete the programs but for example for TESOL the humanities master's programs you're probably looking and this is kind of a guess what should we call it around 10 hours of actual lesson time per week and then a lot of it self-study going away and actually coming up with your own ideas and then presenting them back so it really differs between up five to ten hours per week all the way up to a full schedule mm -hmm. thank you very much again and i'm just checking uh, whether there's any more questions Um, I can't see any more question coming through. Yeah, I think that was all the questions covered. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much, James and Kiara. It was great having you today. And thank you so much for the um, very useful information. We hope to see you again. Yeah, hopefully in person next time. Fingers thank crossed. You. Really thank nice you. to see you. Thank Take you. care. <laughs> İyi akşamlar diliyoruz. Bir sonraki sunumda görüşmek dileğiyle. Bye bye. Thank you very much guys. Bye. Speak soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye. bye.